What's up everybody, Trinity here, and welcome back to the Second Street Marvel. It's New Comic Wednesday, and here I am in my local comic book shop, Bases, Cards, and Comics, right here to bring you all my pull list. Before I get into that, please make sure you subscribe, click the little bell, and all of that good stuff. So, what is a comic book pull list? Well, if you don't know what a comic book pull list is, you can watch the video right up there where you can go and learn more about that. So here I am, like I said, in my local comic book shop, Bases, Cards, and Comics, to bring you my pull list. And if you don't, if you have a local comic book shop near you, you should make sure that you definitely get out and support them. Uh, I know my local comic book shop has more than just comics. They have action figures, shirts, posters, um, other books like manga, trading cards, and just different things like that. And I can assure you that yours probably does as well. So, getting right into it, we're going to start with my Marvel books, uh, starting off with Spider-Man, issue number one. Now, this is the new series being written by J.J. Uh, Abrams and his son Henry, um, with art by Sarah Pacelli and you can see the cover there. It's a new series. It's a mini series. I believe this is only going to be five issues long. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and check it out. And I know I know what you guys are saying out there. If you watched the uh, video a couple of, couple of months ago, you probably seen me talking trash like I wasn't going to pick it up. But you guys know me, man. I love Spider-Man. I was going to pick it up. You know, come on. Come on with that. Anyway, the next one we have here is Jane Foster Valkyrie, issue number three. This series hasn't been too bad, you know, just kind of depending on, you know, whether you like something like this. To me, it's a little bit silly, uh, just kind of some of the things that have been going on, you know, a lot of things happening through happenstance and stuff. But all in all, it's not anything that's uh, terrible. It's pretty well written. So, you know, if you guys are into that, you might check it out. I'll be doing a review of these uh, Jane Foster uh, Valkyrie issues very soon. So the next one I have here is Arrow, issue number three. Now, this is a newer series. This uh, series has really been good. Um, they've, uh, you know, basically Marvel's got a new uh, character that they have uh, drawn up and put uh, into, uh, into the Marvel Universe, and it's pretty good. She's a Chinese character. She uh, controls the wind and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's been quite, a, quite an interesting journey, and I really like the art in this book. In case you guys, in case you guys haven't seen it, I'll show you um, some of the art in here and just how it is. You can see right there, I mean... Uh, it's very very beautiful art and you know really well colored uh, all, all together I couldn't I could I have not a bad thing to say about this series so far now the next one is one that's obviously it's been really big everybody's been talking about it have you been pulling it that's House of X issue number five uh, this series has been really good now I got to tell you you know if you in case you didn't catch the uh, the trailer park live last on Friday um, you know, the, the, like the, the powers of X, that, that last, uh, or powers of 10, whatever you want to call it, it kind of threw me off a little bit. Like, the, there was a couple issues in there that really seemed like they really mattered to the story, and that one came in and kind of, uh, I don't know, just tossed a little monkey wrench in there. It made it a bit confusing again. But uh, maybe I just need to go back and, you know, read a couple issues again. Kind of, you know, sometimes that's what it takes, you know. Maybe, you know, because I've been reading a lot of comics, maybe I need to go refresh, and maybe I'm getting other things confused in my head. I don't know. Maybe these powers of X and house of X really are better as standalone series. Unlike I suggested on my show a while back where why didn't they just write one big, you know, plot line and just call it one title. I don't know. Maybe this is why maybe we're getting into why now, but obviously, you know, like the powers of X has, it's been doing more back and forth telling like some of the history going a little more in depth in some of the stories where the house of X is kind of more exactly like what's going on here in the now, um, in the X-Men story. So altogether, it's been a really great series so far. I have no real complaints about it other than the book itself with some of those fluff pages that don't necessarily need to be in there. The next one I have here is Guardians of the Galaxy issue number nine. Now, um, I'm still a few issues behind here. I need to get caught up. But uh, the, the, the issues I have read on the Guardians of the Galaxy series have been really good. And like I said, I'm still probably about four issues back. So... You know, give me some time and I'll do some reviews on those. In case you guys can't see, I've been um, doing more reviews on a bunch of different uh, titles anyway. Uh, mostly going with some of the indie stuff out there because, uh, I don't know. I, I know I need to do more. Just like some of these titles come out and it's like, do I need to do this specific book or maybe just wait till three or four? I don't know. Why don't you guys let me know down in the comments below. The next one I have here is one of my favorites. It's been good. That's Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Issue number, what are we on, 12? 12 already? Issue number 12. Um, can't wait to get this one read. Tom Taylor's been doing a really good job writing this series, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Uh, another one, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. Uh, Tom Taylor's been doing a good job. I mean, just writing 
friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's just kind of there in his uh, neighborhood taking ca uh, care of stuff. Whereas Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man has seemed like it's been um, concentrating uh, more on like bigger event stuff, not necessarily um, like the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man kind of story. Where I don't know, I think we just get more of the character of Peter Parker in the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man as opposed to um, Amazing Spider-Man where it's more Spider-Man. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. But I've got a video coming up on that very soon. The next one I have here is the facsimile edition of, what is it, Daredevil number 181. And you guys can probably see what's going on here in that one. I've never read this book, but it's a facsimile copy. It's printed just how they were uh, back in uh, when these issues came out. You can see there on the back, uh, it's got the same ad in here. We can, uh, you can flip through here. Uh, you can see it's the, same, it's the same art and everything. And when we get to an ad... You'll see that the, the ads are just like they were back in the day. Just like I remember when I was a kid, when I was reading comic books. You know, they, they all looked like that. That's how they looked like. Except for they were on, like, newsprint. You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll eventually get that one read. Now, that's all I have for my Marvel books this week. I don't have any DC books this week. So I'm going to go ahead and get into some of the smaller press and indies. And we're going to start off with IDW's Napoleon Dynamite, issue number one. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, why wouldn't I pick this up? It's Napoleon Dynamite, right? I mean, you'd have to be some kind of idiot not to buy it, right? Come on, it's Napoleon Dynamite. And, ooh, look, it's not vote for Pedro now. Now it's impeach Pedro? Oh, man. What did Pedro do, man? Come on. He's going to make all your wildest dreams come true. <laughs> anyway, the next one I have here. Now, this is... um on Red 5 Comics, and this is an issue number one, but I just didn't pick it up last month when I knew I should have. I uh, just recently read issue number two, and I'll bring you an issue, uh, review on both of these books. That's Dark Age, issue number one. Now, I gotta tell you, I liked issue number two. I came back in here, I was getting my comic books today. I seen that they had this, so I went ahead and picked it up as well. Um, basically, what's going on in Dark Age is, um, I'm not sure exactly what it was, if it was a curse or something, but basically, um, all the metal in the world has disappeared basically sending uh, humanity back to the Dark Ages. It's kind of weird. Um, crazy story, right? That's, that's what I thought, too. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't realize that when the, uh, when the first issue was coming out. So, you know, I didn't really, I didn't pick it up. But luckily, they had it here at my co local comic book shop. So I went ahead and picked it up now because I did like that issue number two. And there will be a review on the two of those coming up. Now, the next one I have here is a number one on Aftershock Comics. And this one I was really looking forward to when I seen um, just kind of what it was about. is You Are Obsolete, issue number one on Aftershock Comics. Now, I can't remember exactly what this one was about, but uh, the, the idea and the premise of it, you know, just there on, uh, I think it was on Previews World where I got my previews from and kind of looked it up, um, sounded, like an interesting, sounded like an interesting read. And there was an advertisement for this in uh, one of the other books I read. It may have been Resonant. Oh, no, no, it wasn't Resident. I did, that's not on Aftershock. God, what was the other one? I just, I just read another one on Aftershock not too long ago. It was a pretty good title as well. Um, the next one I have here is on Boom Studios. And you all know what this one is. That's Once in Future, issue number two. Now, I did a review of issue number one not too long ago. It was a really good book. Um, if you guys don't already have this on your pull list, shame on you. I don't know what you're waiting for. It was pretty good. Um, something, I don't know, it was, it was a little bit different story. You can go back and watch my review of that. Um, altogether, I got to say that I really did like this Once in Future. So it's on my pull list, and I'm going to be pulling the rest of those issues. Um, I'm not sure if it's just a mini series or if it's going to be an ongoing. Either way, it's been, it was pretty good, that first series. Now the next one is one, you guys have probably seen my review just not too long ago. I, this, was, this is one on my pull list I absolutely love, and that's uh, Blade Runner. 2019 issue number three now this is the sid mead variant that means this this one actually has the cover of it it's some of the like original um work that they had for the blade runner film when it came out back in god what was what was that uh in the early 80s early 80s like 81 82 um, but it's uh, it was some of the art that uh, he had uh, made like con conception art or conceptual art for that film so I went ahead and got that Sid Mead variant. And the next one I have here is, uh, you guys might, might, might not be surprised if you've been watching uh, this, uh, my channel here, but uh, this uh, Return to Whisper, cult classics. Uh, this is down uh, by Vault Comics. Um, obviously, I don't know, it sounds like it's uh, 
Sounds like it's supposed to be like some sort of old school, like scary tales. I haven't read any of the rest of them, but I can tell you it's on Vault Comics. And so far, I've come to trust what Vault Comics is doing with their titles. I definitely want to look into more of their issues. I do know that there was uh, one uh, not too long ago that came out called Test. I could probably find them. Uh, probably find them somewhere right here on the shelf right behind me if I, if I looked hard enough. Um... I don't know. It's probably it's probably there though. But it was called Test, and the, um, uh, I, I want to look I want to look it up. It, I think issue number four of that is getting ready to come out this week as well. But it's not on my pull list um, or anything like that. So I don't know. Maybe we'll see how that turns out one of these days. But the next one I have here is uh, it's not so much of an indie. I don't know. Is Dynamite still count as indie? But that's Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, issue number nine. And this is the cover I went ahead and and picked up there. They have uh, different covers on these, and you guys know there for a while I was picking up the photo variants on them. But lately I've you know looked at some of the art on some of these covers, and I can't deny how great some of them are. If you didn't see the one I picked up of issue number eight, the art was phenomenal on it. So I went ahead and picked up this new issue of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And that's all I have for my comic book pull list this week. But let me know down in the comments below what's on your pull list. And what of these books on my comic book pull list would you like to see me do reviews on very soon? Or would you like me to talk about more on my show, The Trailer Park Live, which I do every single Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time? It is like more of a rated R kind of show, so uh, make sure, you know... If you don't want somebody saying curse words and he, your kids hearing it, make sure that, uh, you know, put them to sleep before you come to watch the Trailer Park Live on Fridays. I also do a live stream show um, throughout the week, Monday through Friday, early in the mornings called, uh, it's on at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, called the Morning Movie Chat, where I flap my gums about movies and stuff like that. So, anyway, that's all I've got for uh, this video today, folks. Thank you all so much for tuning into the Second Street Marvel. If you haven't already... Please make sure you're subscribed and make sure you have those notifications turned on so you get um, alerts anytime I've uploaded new content and it sends you out those alerts anytime I plan on doing a live video. If you could also do me a favor, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. I honestly don't care, but interact in some way and please make sure that you leave a comment down in the comment section and most importantly, make sure you share this video with a friend and invite them to come hang out with us here on the Second Street Marvel. You all have a very good day, have a great rest of your week, happy reading, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.